At the center of this storm stood Rachel Thorne, a beloved high school English teacher, known for her warm smile and dedication to her students. Her husband, Jasper, was a successful real estate agent with a charismatic personality that could charm the coldest of hearts. They seemed like the perfect couple, often seen holding hands at the local farmer's market or cheering together at Friday night football games. But appearances can be deceiving, and beneath the veneer of their picture-perfect marriage lay a web of secrets and betrayal. The catalyst for the impending chaos was Rachel's younger sister, Ivy. Ten years Rachel's junior, Ivy had always been the wild child of the family, flitting from one adventure to another across the country. Her recent return to Springfield had stirred up old tensions and awakened new desires. As the Thorne family prepared for their annual autumn gathering, an event that typically brought joy and togetherness, little did they know that this year's reunion would end in bloodshed. Rachel Marie Thorne was born and raised in Springfield. The eldest of two daughters, she had always been the responsible one, the rock upon which her family relied. From a young age, Rachel showed a passion for literature and a natural talent for teaching. She excelled in her studies at Springfield High, where she would later return as an educator. After graduating with honors, Rachel attended the University of Wisconsin-Madison, earning a degree in English literature. Her college years were marked by academic achievement and a growing sense of independence. Yet, the pull of home remained strong, and upon graduation she returned to Springfield to begin her teaching career. It was during her first year of teaching that Rachel met Jasper Thorne. She was 23, idealistic and instantly captivated by his confident charm. Their courtship was a whirlwind of romantic gestures and shared dreams. Jasper spoke of building a life together in Springfield, of raising a family in the town they both loved. Rachel, who had always valued stability and community, fell deeply in love with both the man and the future he promised. They married after a year of dating, in a ceremony that the town still talked about years later. Rachel threw herself into being the perfect wife, just as she had been the perfect daughter and student. She balanced her teaching career with supporting Jasper's ambitions, always putting others before herself. For years she believed she had achieved the happily ever after she had always dreamed of, unaware of the cracks forming in the foundation of her marriage. Jasper Thorne came from old money, his family among the founders of Springfield. The Thorns had a reputation for being charming, successful, and slightly dangerous. Jasper grew up with the weight of these expectations on his shoulders the pressure to maintain the family legacy, ever present. As a child, Jasper was known for his mischievous smile and ability to talk his way out of trouble. These traits served him well as he grew into a handsome young man with a silver tongue. He breezed through high school more on charm than academic effort, and while he attended college, he never quite found his passion in academics. Returning to Springfield after a lackluster college experience, Jasper joined his father's real estate firm. He quickly proved to have a natural talent for sales, his charisma and local connections making him one of the top agents in the county. Jasper reveled in his success, enjoying the status and admiration it brought him. When he met Rachel, Jasper saw in her everything he lacked, stability, intellectual depth, and genuine goodness. He pursued her with the same intensity he applied to closing a difficult sale. In Rachel, he believed he had found the missing piece that would make him truly worthy of the Thorn name. Yet beneath Jasper's polished exterior lurked insecurities and desires he couldn't quite quell. The thrill of the chase, whether in business or his personal life, was something he found hard to resist. As the years passed, the excitement of his marriage to Rachel began to wane, leaving him vulnerable to temptation. Ivy Carson had always been a free spirit, much to the chagrin of her parents and the fascination of the townspeople. Ten years younger than Rachel, she grew up in her sister's shadow constantly compared to the golden child of the family. Where Rachel was studious and responsible, Ivy was creative and impulsive. After a tumultuous adolescence, marked by rebellious behavior and family arguments, Ivy left Springfield the day after her high school graduation. For years, she drifted from city to city, taking odd jobs and chasing dreams of becoming an artist. Her family received sporadic updates, a postcard from Seattle, a phone call from Miami, always with the promise that she was on the verge of something big. Ivy's return to Springfield came as a surprise to everyone, including herself. At 28, with her dreams of artistic success unfulfilled and her savings depleted, 
she found herself back in her childhood bedroom. She took a job as a barista at the local coffee shop, her exotic experiences and worldly attitude causing quite a stir among the locals. Readjusting to small-town life was a challenge for Ivy. She felt stifled by the familiarity and judgment she perceived from every corner. It was in this state of restlessness and vulnerability that she reconnected with her brother-in-law, Jasper, setting in motion the events that would lead to tragedy. The first inkling of trouble came to Rachel on a mundane Tuesday afternoon. She was grading papers in her classroom, the autumn sun casting long shadows across the empty desks. When she noticed a text message notification on Jasper's linked iPad, he had left at home. It was from Ivy, a simple message that read, Can't wait to see you later, same place? The words themselves were innocent enough, but something about the tone set off alarm bells in Rachel's mind. Over the next few weeks, Rachel found herself paying closer attention to the little details she had previously overlooked. Jasper's late nights at the office became more frequent. He was protective of his phone, always keeping it face down or in his pocket. Ivy, who had been a frequent visitor to their home since her return, suddenly became scarce, offering vague excuses when invited to family dinners. Rachel tried to rationalize these changes, telling herself she was being paranoid. After all, Jasper and Ivy had always gotten along well. It was natural for them to be friends, wasn't it? But the knot in her stomach grew tighter with each passing day. The definitive proof came on a rainy Saturday afternoon. Rachel had decided to surprise Jasper at his office, thinking she might convince him to knock off early and enjoy a rare weekend together. As she approached the real estate agency, she saw Jasper's car parked in its usual spot. But as she drew closer, she noticed another familiar vehicle, Ivy's beat-up Volkswagen Beetle parked discreetly around the corner. Heart-pounding, Rachel approached the office building. Through the rain-streaked window, she could make out two figures in Jasper's private office. They were embracing, their silhouettes merging into one as Rachel watched, frozen in disbelief. In that moment, her world shattered. Rachel didn't confront them. Instead, she retreated to her car, her mind a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, betrayal, and a deep, aching sadness warred within her. She drove aimlessly for hours, eventually finding herself parked at the edge of Lake Springfield, where she and Jasper had shared their first kiss. As the reality of the situation sank in, Rachel's initial shock gave way to a cold, calculated anger. Memories flooded her mind. Jasper's late nights, Ivy's awkward behavior, the knowing looks she had dismissed from town gossips. How long had this been going on? How could her own sister, her flesh and blood, betray her like this? In that moment, staring out at the still waters of the lake, something shifted inside Rachel. The kind, forgiving teacher was replaced by a woman scorned, determined to make the betrayers pay for their actions. She thought of the upcoming family gathering, an event that had always been a source of joy. Now it presented an opportunity, a chance to expose Jasper and Ivy's deceit in front of everyone they knew. As Rachel drove home, her mind was already formulating a plan. The annual Thorn family gathering would be the perfect stage for her revenge. Little did she know, her decision would set in motion a chain of events that would end in tragedy. In the days following her discovery, Rachel moved through her daily routine like a ghost, her mind constantly churning with plans for revenge. She maintained a facade of normalcy, smiling at her students, exchanging pleasantries with colleagues, and even managing civil conversations with Jasper. But beneath this calm exterior, a storm was brewing. Rachel's plan centered around the annual Thorn family gathering, scheduled for the following weekend. It was a tradition that brought together extended family and close friends, a celebration of togetherness that now seemed like a cruel joke to Rachel. She decided this would be the perfect setting for her grand revelation. Her preparations were meticulous. First, she gathered evidence, screenshots of text messages she had managed to retrieve from Jasper's iPad, credit card statements showing suspicious purchases, and even a few photos she had discreetly taken of Jasper and Ivy together in town. She compiled these into a folder, a dossier of betrayal that she planned to dramatically reveal at the gathering. Next, Rachel carefully crafted her approach. She would wait until dinner was in full swing, when everyone was relaxed and slightly buzzed from the flowing wine. She would stand to make a toast, a tradition she had always participated in, praising family and love. But this year, her words would be laced with venom, culminating in the exposure of Jasper and Ivy's affair. As she plotted, 
Rachel grappled with moments of doubt and guilt. Was she going too far? Would public humiliation solve anything? But each time these thoughts surfaced, she remembered the sight of Jasper and Ivy embracing, and her resolve hardened. The night before the gathering, Rachel sat alone in her study, rehearsing her speech and steeling herself for what was to come. She felt a mix of anticipation and dread, knowing that once she set her plan in motion, there would be no going back. Her life and the lives of those around her would be forever changed. As she finally went to bed, lying next to the husband who had betrayed her, Rachel felt a sense of grim satisfaction. Tomorrow, the truth would come out. Tomorrow, Jasper and Ivy would face the consequences of their actions. Little did Rachel know, her quest for justice would spiral out of control, leading to an outcome more tragic than she could have ever imagined. The day of the Thorn family gathering dawned bright and clear, a beautiful autumn Saturday that belied the storm about to break. Rachel rose early, her stomach in knots as she began preparing for the event. Jasper, oblivious to what was coming, whistled cheerfully as he set up tables in the backyard. As the afternoon wore on, family members began to arrive. Uncle Theo and Aunt Beatrice were first, bringing their famous apple pie and boisterous laughter. Cousins followed, Dominic with his new wife Lena, Fiona with her three rambunctious children. Family friends trickled in, each adding to the growing atmosphere of celebration. Rachel greeted each arrival with a strained smile, her eyes constantly darting to the driveway, waiting for Ivy to appear. When her sister finally arrived, fashionably late as usual, Rachel felt a surge of anger so strong it nearly took her breath away. Ivy looked radiant in a flowy sundress, her carefree smile a stark contrast to Rachel's inner turmoil. Jasper's reaction to Ivy's arrival didn't go unnoticed by Rachel. His eyes lingered a moment too long, his hug a second too tight. Rachel's hand tightened around her glass of lemonade, the only outward sign of her roiling emotions. The stage was set, the players all in place. Now it was only a matter of time. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the gathering, the family settled around the long table in the backyard. The air was filled with the aroma of grilled meats, fresh bread, and Aunt Beatrice's apple pie. Wine flowed freely, loosening tongues and brightening cheeks. Rachel sat at one end of the table, Jasper at the other with Ivy seated strategically between them. Throughout the meal Rachel watched their interactions with hawk-like intensity. She noticed the subtle glances, the way their hands brushed when passing dishes, the inside jokes that elicited quiet laughter. The conversation ebbed and flowed around her, but Rachel barely participated. She nodded at appropriate times, forced laughter when expected, all while a countdown ticked in her head. Her hand occasionally strayed to her pocket, where the folder of evidence sat like a ticking time bomb. As the main course was cleared away and dessert was brought out, the tension around Rachel became palpable. Uncle Theo, always perceptive, asked if she was feeling all right. Rachel assured him she was fine, just a bit tired from all the preparations. Jasper, from the other end of the table, raised an eyebrow in concern but didn't press the issue. Ivy, perhaps sensing the undercurrent of tension, became increasingly nervous. She laughed too loudly at jokes, spilled wine on her dress and kept glancing at Rachel with a mix of guilt and apprehension. As Aunt Beatrice began serving her apple pie, Rachel knew the moment had come. She stood slowly, wine glass in hand and gently tapped it with a spoon. All eyes turned to her, expecting the usual heartwarming toast about family and love. Instead, they were about to witness the unraveling of everything the Thorn family held dear. Rachel's voice, when she began to speak, was calm and measured, betraying none of the turmoil within. She started by thanking everyone for coming, for being part of the Thorn family tradition. She spoke of love, loyalty and trust values that had been the bedrock of their family for generations. Then her tone shifted. I've always believed in the strength of our family, she said, her eyes locking onto Jasper's. But sometimes, the people we trust the most are the ones who betray us in the worst ways. A hush fell over the gathering. Jasper's face drained of color as he realized what was happening. Ivy, seated between them, began to tremble visibly. With deliberate slowness, Rachel reached into her pocket and withdrew the folder. From it, she produced copies of text messages, credit card statements, and photos. Her voice grew harder as she laid out the evidence of Jasper and Ivy's affair, detailing their secret meetings and lies. The reactions around the table ranged from gasps of shock to muttered denials, and Beatrice's hand flew to her mouth, while Uncle Theo's face darkened with anger. The children, sensing the adult tension, 
fell unusually quiet. Jasper attempted to interject, to offer some explanation, but Rachel silenced him with a look of pure venom. Ivy, tears streaming down her face, made no attempt to deny the accusations. As Rachel's revelation reached its crescendo, she turned to address the entire gathering. This is the truth of our perfect family, she declared, her voice shaking with emotion. This is what becomes of trust and loyalty in the House of Thorn. With those final words, Rachel tossed the contents of the folder onto the table, where damning evidence scattered among half-eaten plates of apple pie. The idyllic family gathering had been shattered, replaced by a tableau of shock, betrayal and impending chaos. The silence that followed Rachel's revelation was deafening, broken only by the sound of a fork clattering to the ground. Then as if a dam had burst, chaos erupted around the table. Aunt Beatrice let out a wail of disbelief, while Uncle Theo's face turned a dangerous shade of red as he lunged towards Jasper. Cousin Dominic quickly intervened, restraining his father from doing something he might regret. The children, sensing the gravity of the situation, began to cry, adding to the cacophony of shouting and recriminations. Fiona hurriedly gathered her kids, ushering them inside the house and away from the unfolding drama. Lena, Dominic's new wife, sat frozen in shock her eyes darting between Jasper and Ivy as if seeing them for the first time. Other family friends muttered among themselves, some edging away from the table, unsure whether to leave or stay. Amidst the uproar, Jasper remained seated, his head in his hands while Ivy sobbed uncontrollably, mascara streaking down her face. Rachel stood at the head of the table, a mixture of vindication and despair washing over her as she watched her family splinter before her eyes. As the initial shock began to subside, Jasper finally found his voice. He stood, hands raised in a placating gesture and attempted to address the gathering. His usual charm deserted him as he stumbled over his words, trying to explain, to justify, to somehow mitigate the damage done. Rachel cut him off, her voice cold and sharp as steel. She demanded to know how long the affair had been going on, how they could betray her so callously. Ivy still sobbing, choked out that it had started shortly after her return to Springfield, that she never meant for it to happen. The confrontation quickly devolved into a three-way shouting match. Jasper accused Rachel of emotional neglect, of being more devoted to her students than to their marriage. Rachel fired back, listing all the sacrifices she had made for him, the dreams she had put on hold to support his career. Ivy caught between them, alternated between pleading for forgiveness and defending her actions. She spoke of feeling lost, of the connection she had found with Jasper of mistakes made in moments of weakness. Their words became weapons, each accusation and counter-accusation drawing blood. Years of unspoken resentments and buried feelings erupted to the surface. Rachel revealed her suspicions of other affairs, her growing disillusionment with their life together. Jasper, his composure crumbling, admitted to feelings of inadequacy, of constantly striving to live up to the Thorn family name. As the argument reached a fever pitch, Uncle Theo intervened, physically placing himself between Jasper and Rachel. His booming voice cut through the chaos, demanding that everyone take a step back and calm down. In the momentary lull that followed Uncle Theo's intervention, no one noticed Aunt Beatrice quietly making her way to the kitchen. When she returned, clutching something behind her back, her usually kind face was contorted with rage. Before anyone could react, Aunt Beatrice lunged at Ivy, swinging a heavy cast-iron skillet. The blow caught Ivy on the side of her head with a sickening thud. She crumpled to the ground, blood quickly pooling around her still form. The scene exploded into pandemonium. Rachel screamed, a primal sound of horror that cut through the shocked silence. Jasper rushed to Ivy's side, cradling her limp body and yelling for someone to call an ambulance. Uncle Theo wrestled the skillet from Beatrice's grasp as she stood there, dazed, as if she couldn't quite believe what she had done. Cousin Dominic, his face ashen fumbled with his phone, hands shaking as he dialed 911. In the chaos, no one immediately noticed Rachel slipping away from the scene. As sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder with each passing second, she moved through the house in a daze, her mind struggling to process the horrific turn of events. The arrival of the ambulance and police shattered the last vestiges of normalcy in the Thorn household. Paramedics rushed to attend to Ivy their urgent voices and swift movements a blur of activity in the blood-stained backyard. The police, responding to reports of a violent disturbance, began cordoning off the area and separating family members for questioning. 
Ivy, still unconscious, was quickly loaded into the ambulance. The paramedics worked feverishly as they sped toward Springfield General Hospital, fighting to stabilize her condition. Jasper, his shirt stained with Ivy's blood, insisted on riding in the ambulance, his face a mask of guilt and fear. Back at the house, the police struggled to piece together the events of the evening. Family members, still in shock, gave conflicting accounts. Aunt Beatrice, the attack's perpetrator, sat silently in a police cruiser, her vacant stare a stark contrast to her earlier rage. As the chaos unfolded, a chilling realization swept through the gathering. Rachel was nowhere to be found. Initial assumptions that she had accompanied Ivy to the hospital proved false. Panic began to set in as family members and police searched the house and surrounding property, calling Rachel's name with increasing desperation. It was cousin Dominic who made the grim discovery. Following a hunch, he made his way to the old boathouse by Lake Springfield, a short distance from the Thorn property. There, he found Rachel's body, hanging from the rafters, a hastily scribbled note clutched in her lifeless hand. The note, tear-stained and barely legible, spoke of unbearable pain and betrayal. Rachel's final words expressed regret for the hurt she had caused, but also a deep-seated anger at the betrayal that had driven her to this point. She had never intended for violence to erupt, never imagined the devastating consequences of her revelation. As word of Rachel's suicide spread, a pall of grief and guilt descended upon the family. The flashing lights of emergency vehicles illuminated faces contorted with anguish, the once joyous family gathering now irreversibly shattered. At the hospital, doctors fought to save Ivy's life, her condition critical due to the severe head trauma. Jasper, relegated to the waiting room, was confronted with the full weight of his actions and their tragic consequences. In the span of a few hours, the Thorn family had been torn apart by betrayal, violence, and death. The quaint town of Springfield, once known for its tranquility, would forever be scarred by the events of this fateful night. The police investigation was thorough and swift. Aunt Beatrice was arrested and charged with aggravated assault. Despite her age and previously spotless record, the brutality of her attack left little room for leniency. Jasper found himself under scrutiny as well. While not directly responsible for the violence, his affair with Ivy was seen as the catalyst for the entire tragedy. He faced potential charges related to adultery, which was still technically illegal in Wisconsin, though rarely prosecuted. The trial, when it came, was a somber affair. The courtroom was packed each day with Springfield residents, all struggling to comprehend how their picture-perfect neighbors had come to this. The legal proceedings concluded with a series of somber sentences that reflected the tragic nature of the events. Aunt Beatrice, despite her advanced age and the character witnesses who spoke of her previously gentle nature, was sentenced to five years in prison for aggravated assault. However, due to her declining health and the unusual circumstances of the case, the judge allowed for the possibility of home confinement after serving two years, pending good behavior and psychological evaluation. Jasper, while not directly charged for Rachel's death, did not escape legal consequences. He was charged with adultery, a rare prosecution of this technically still illegal act in Wisconsin and more significantly, with reckless endangerment due to his role in the events leading to the violent outcome. The judge, noting the indirect but undeniable link between Jasper's actions and the tragedy that unfolded, sentenced him to three years in prison. This sentence was accompanied by a mandatory requirement for extensive psychological counseling and community service upon release, aimed at rehabilitating him and allowing him to make amends to the community he had helped to fracture. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the Thorne family retreated from public life. The scandal had torn apart not just their family, but had shaken the entire community's sense of trust and security.